Welcome back. We're going to go ahead and do the lesson six two notes together properties of parallelogram. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So in this figure over here, we consider this a, as a parallelogram because one, it's a quadrilateral, meaning it has four, one, two, three, four sides. And note by the arrows here, we can see that this corresponds with this. So that means that this segment is parallel to this segment. And then this segment here is parallel to, uh, to that segment here. So that means that we do have a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel, parallel sides. Hence, we call this a parallelogram. So let's go ahead and take a look at the properties of parallelograms. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay, and here's an example. If JKLM, JKLM is a parallelogram, then we can say that segment JK is congruent to segment ML. So JK is congruent to segment ML. And we can't forget about these tick marks over here. We can say that segment JM is congruent to segment KL. Okay. Once again, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So these things here are opposite and they're congruent, and these things here are opposite and congruent. Now, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Okay. So here's JKLM. It's a parallelogram. Then that, mean, that means that angle J and angle L are congruent. And that means that angle M and angle K are also congruent. So if you have a figure, which is a quadrilateral, it's a parallelogram, then we can say that those angles are congruent. Those opposite angles are congruent. And then here we have this. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary, meaning that these angles add up to what? 180 degrees. So consecutive angles, basically just next to. Um, if JKLM is a parallelogram, then we can see that X and Y, that these two you know, these two angles here, they add up to 180. These two angles here add up to 180. These two angles here add up to 180. And these two angles here add up to 180. So what do I say? Uh, X plus Y is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? And here's this last one. Here's this last property. Uh, if, a quadrilateral is a, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and one angle is right, then the whole thing is right. So... Um, note that if we have, you know, JKLM, it's a parallelogram, and see that angle J is right. So what does this imply for these angles over here? That means that these angles are also right. Okay, so we can say that angle K and angle M and angle L are also, also right angles. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at this example here. So we have uh, basketball. Okay, so in a parallelogram, so this figure over here, or the symbol here, that means parallelogram. So how are you supposed to read this? You say in parallelogram A, B, C, D. So here's my parallelogram, this thing right here. Suppose that measure angle A is 55, AB is 2.5 feet, and BC is 1 foot. Find each measure, and thankfully, I don't have to convert anything to different units. Everything looks the same to me. So, let's go ahead and recall the properties. Um, we know, or we're not going to be using this. This is not necessary. We're not going to be using this property here for this problem. Um, 
as you know I'll, I'll, I'll you, you'll see it when, when we get through it so we know that one of the properties opposite sides are congruent opposite angles angles are congruent and then the consecutive sides are supplementary okay so that means if i were to look at this figure i'm like okay so just by drawing my little tick marks and arcs and such segment ab is congruent to segment dc and then segment ad is congruent to segment bc know that angle a is congruent to angle c because opposite angles are congruent and then angle d is congruent to angle b because again opposite angles are congruent right so again opposite sides are congruent opposite angles are congruent, are congruent and then we need to know consecutive sides are supplementary since we're going to be uh, just having done this problem before i'm telling you that this is going to be needed um so let's go ahead and label measure angle a is 55 okay so this angle here is 55 degrees so what does that what does that imply measure angle c is 55 degrees so i can go ahead and write that down there measure angle b is over here okay and measure angle a is 55 right but remember consecutive sides are supplementary so that means that these angles have to add up to 180 degrees so this is part of my 180 and this is part of my 180 so 55 plus what will give me 180 well that's 125 degrees so measure angle b is 125 degrees okay um and remember that a b so here's a b that's what 2.5 feet so i'm gonna put 2.5 feet here that means that dc is also 2.5 feet so that's 2.5 feet All right and then here's bc bc is one foot therefore ad is one foot but we don't necessarily need to figure that out there theorem 6.1 diagonals of a pair of parallelograms if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram then its diagonals bisect each other so what happens here is that when you bisect something okay so suppose that you have a parallelogram right and they have these diagonals these diagonals bisect each other at a midpoint at a midpoint and what does a midpoint do remember a midpoint they split segment into two congruent parts right we can't forget that because we've already talked about what bisecting does a lot in this course so again here's my parallelogram and we have these diagonals here and it creates a midpoint which i'm going to go ahead and draw there's my midpoint um that means that this is the midpoint of segment AC. And since that's the midpoint of segment AC, this segment here and this segment here are congruent. So I draw one tick mark for each of them. And we can see that seg uh, this midpoint is also part of this segment here, segment DB. So that means that this segment here and this segment here are congruent, okay? Then that's just because of the power of the midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and say the segment AP is congruent to segment PC. One tick mark for each of them. And then we can say that segment DP is congruent to segment PB. Because we can see that those, those two tick marks are there. And that's because, again, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other and they bisect at a midpoint so we can see which parts are congruent now if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram then each diagonal separates the parallelogram into two congruent triangles so we only have we have a uh, quadrilateral as a quadrilateral it's a parallelogram 
So if I have a diagonal introduced, it's going to create two triangles here. So you can see the triangle there, and they share this particular side, and you can see that triangle there. These two triangles are congruent, so I say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. And again, when you're writing uh, a congruency statement, they have the, the letters must correspond, they must be in order. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at example two together. If QRST is a parallelogram, find the value of the indicated variable. So we can assume that QRST is a parallelogram. This is what we can assume. So that means opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, um, the diagonals of a parallelogram, they bisect each other at a midpoint, and all those sort of things that we've already looked at and talked about. And we're gonna go ahead and apply that to this figure. So let me go ahead and take a look. This is a parallelogram. Once again, we can assume that because it's said from our given. That means that uh, segment QR is congruent to segment TS, so opposite sides are congruent. Segment QT is congruent to segment RS. Again, opposite sides are congruent. And um, we know that this angle is congruent to this angle, and that angle is congruent to that angle, and yada yada. I'm not going to mark that. And there's a reason why I'm not going to mark that, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the diagonals. So here are my diagonals, and these are diagonals of a parallelogram. That means that these diagonals do bisect each other, and it creates a midpoint here, okay? That means that this midpoint is part of this segment, which splits these two things you know together and they're congruent and oh how many uh tick marks do i need i need three okay and then here's the midpoint for this segment that means that this segment and this segment are congruent so i can go ahead and put one two three four tick marks for each okay all right um let's go ahead and, and figure out what x is well know that this 5x is part of qt and qt is equal to rs so that means i'll do 5x equals 27 and if i divide both sides by 5 i get x is equal to 27 over 5 which you know i can say 5.4 which is 5.4 okay and then over here I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. Note that 2y minus 5 and y plus 4. Well, 2y minus 5 is part of this segment, and y plus 4 is part of this segment. And I love how um, the I love the positioning between the uh, in these two expressions. You can see that you know it's just floating right here, and it's on top of the segment, and then this y plus 4 is on top of that segment as well. Okay, if this y plus 4 is like below, it could be a little confusing where the, the placements are. Okay, um, so uh, note that these segments are congruent because of that, you know, whole bisecting situation. So I can do 2y minus 5 minus 5 is equal to y plus 4. So then what is that going to give me? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add both sides by 5 and then subtract both sides by y. So y is equal to 9. That's the answer for that particular problem. Okay? And then here, let's go ahead and solve for z. Okay, so remember about this whole placement thing about b, and which I love so much? Well, 3z is actually part of this angle here. So look, 3z is not this segment. 3z is actually part of this angle over here. Okay, and it's very, very close to this, you know, side here, so... We can assume that this is part of this angle, angle what, T, S, P, or whatever. And then 33, yes, it looks like it's part of this side, but it's actually part of this angle, okay? So, that's kind of weird, because I know that angle Q is congruent to angle S, right? But angle Q is consists of this angle and this angle together, and angle S is congruent. Uh, consists of this angle and you know the measure of this angle here but we don't even know what that is again 3z is part of this angle here okay 
I need to set it equal to something. You have to understand that you're dealing with a parallelogram. Remember? Parallelogram, that means that it is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So if I were to go ahead and go down, if I were to go ahead and go back to that problem, where's that problem? It's over here. Let me go ahead and use a different color. That means that opposite sides are parallel. One feather right there and one feather down below, and then two feathers on the left-hand side and two feathers there on the right-hand side. So when you have these parallel lines, you're going to be dealing with a transversal, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in yellow because you're now dealing with alternate interior angles, meaning that this angle, meaning that this angle... In this angle here are congruent by alternate interior angles. These angles are on the opposite side of the transversal. Okay. So what does that mean for Z? Well, how do I solve or set up the equation for Z then solve for it? So it's 33 is equal to 3Z. So really, it's Z is equal to 11. That's your answer. Okay. Don't forget about those pairs of parallel sides you're dealing with a parallelogram all right conditions for parallelograms um these are converse theorems as you can see over here or whatever you're looking at right now these are my converse theorems so it says that if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're trying to figure out these conditions and we're going to go ahead and determine using these conditions whether or not these things are parallel parallelograms. So I can see that, okay, well, look, AB is congruent to, uh, sorry, what am I saying? AB is congruent to DC and AD is congruent to BC. What can I say about this whole figure here? It's a parallelogram. So in order for me to figure out the length of this and see if it's congruent to this, and that's the same case for this segment and this segment here, I'm using the distance formula, okay? And you're going to be like, whoa, why are we going to be involving the distance formula? Um, we'll, we'll get into that in a, in a few or, you know, on a homework assignment or whatever. So the distance formula, if you don't remember, if D is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, the quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1 the quantity squared okay uh here's a definition if a quadrilateral has opposite sides parallel okay well it's a quadrilateral and it the opposite sides are parallel then it implies that we're dealing with a parallelogram no doubt about it okay look this here is a quadrilateral and we can see that these pairs are you know parallel and these pairs are parallel so i can say i can safely say that this figure here is a parallelogram okay theorem 6.3 if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram okay so opposite angles are congruent then you can say that this figure is a parallelogram for the diagonals, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a um, parallelogram. Y'all, remember, when we say bisect, right, it creates that midpoint. And remember, we had to figure out the midpoint of something. And we were using something called the midpoint formula. Remember the midpoint formula, which was basically capital letter M equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2 and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. Okay, that's how you figure out the midpoint. So if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, so if you have the if you have this picture, um, you have these diagonals, and you can see that this tick mark here and this tick mark here, they're congruent, and this tick mark here and this tick mark here, they're congruent, then you can say that this figure is a parallelogram. Okay. So if a b is equal to dc and a d is equal to bc 
then a b c d is a parallel hmm, that doesn't make sense um i don't even know why this is here that's really really confusing okay whatever um am i done no i have to take a look at this too i'm sorry i don't know why there's some markings there but theorem 6.5 if one pair of if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that means that, okay, if you have this side and this side congruent to parallel, then that means that this side here and this side here are also parallel and congruent, right? Um, so we can say that this figure is a uh, parallelogram. And what you're going to have to do if you're dealing with something like that, well, first of all, you need to make sure that, remember, something, uh, lines are parallel if they have the same slope, remember? So lines are parallel if they have the same slope, and we have to use the slope formula, which is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so that's me having to figure out whether or not these two things are parallel. Um, and we got to figure out if whether or not these two segments are congruent. And we have to use, you know, the distance formula for that one. Distance formula. Okay. All right. Uh, this theorem really, I don't know why we wrote this. This should not be here. That actually is really, really confusing. I'm about to, I'm about to rewrite this. Hey y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and redo this part of the video, theorem 6.4. Um, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here you have a quadrilateral and you can see that AC bisects BD or vice versa. You can say that BD bisects AC. Then, you know, if they bisect each other at this particular point, this midpoint to be exact we'll call it point p then you can say that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram okay and in order for you to figure out whether or not they you know intersect at this midpoint here or at this point p you're going to use the midpoint formula and the midpoint formula is this it's m equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2 and y1 plus y2 all over 2 okay so the example shouldn't be if segment ab is congruent to segment dc and segment ad is congruent to segment bc then abcd is a parallel again that's not the correct example in fact that example goes under theorem 6.2 where you're talking about opposite sides of a quadrilateral being congruent right this we're not talking about sides we're talking about diagonals here so this is just a little typo it should say if i don't know a b c d a b c d is a quadrilateral and a c a c um bisects bd or vice versa then a b c d is a parallelogram parallelogram okay hopefully that clears everything up i'm going to take this video and i'm going to get edit it edit it in to the actual video okay so again hopefully that makes sense okay uh let me go ahead and take a look at example three verify that the points f g h j form a parallelogram by verifying that the, the opposite sides have equal slopes and verifying that the two diagonals have the same midpoint uh so we are we are using we are using theorem 6.5 okay so we are using theorem 6.5 to verify whether or not uh, this figure is a parallelogram um so i'm gonna go ahead and do a quick sketch 
I'm going to go ahead and do a quick sketch on where things are. Note that uh, F negative 2 comma 4 is basically top left. If I were to imagine a graph, right? If I were to imagine a graph, uh, negative 2 comma 4 would be on the top left of that graph, right? A graph that looks like this. So let me go ahead and draw my quadrant. So negative 2 comma 4 would be right here. So that's F. And then a three comma five, three comma five would be right here. And that's G. Okay, this is just a quick sketch. I don't necessarily have to be accurate. I am just drawing, like figuring things out where thing or where the points are actually located. And then H two comma negative three would be like right here on that um, fourth quadrant. So that's H. And then J would be right here on that third quadrant, All right? So this is the first, second, third, fourth quadrant, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect. Okay, so that means that I'm gonna go have, to, I'm gonna have to verify the opposite side. So this side here and this side here have equal slopes and this side here and this side here have equal slopes as well. So let's find the slope of, you know, the slope of FG, which is this. So it's five minus four over three minus negative two. I'm just using the slope formula, remember that. I'm gonna review how to do the slope uh, in my in one of my earlier videos. So five minus four is one, and then three minus negative two, three minus negative two becomes three plus two, so that's one over five, okay? And then let's figure out, since we figure out this slope here, I gotta figure out that slope here and see if they are the same. So MJH is equal to, so here's JH. So I can do um, negative three, minus negative four and then i would have to do the same thing two it's over two minus negative uh three okay which is equal to well that negative times the negative becomes a positive positive so it's negative one over two well, what did i do wrong um uh, actually no that's one over five okay uh, so those two things are uh those two things have equal slope so those are parallel now i'm going to go ahead and figure out what fj and gh are so the slope of fj so it would be four minus negative four over negative two minus negative three. So four minus negative four is um, eight. And then negative two minus three, that's eight over one. And then gotta figure out what GH is. So the slope of GH would be, again, it's Y two minus Y one over X two minus X one. So five minus negative three over three minus two. Seem like seems like that's eight over one. So I can see that these slopes here are parallel just by looking at that. And then these slopes here are also parallel just by looking at what I just calculated. Okay, so um, that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and determine whether or not the two diagonals have the same midpoint. Hmm, I just realized I'm not using Theorem 6.5, my bad. I'm just making mistakes all around. Um, I'm basically using... Um, I'm basically using the definition and Theorem 6.4 to figure out what this is. Okay. All right, so, because I just realized we're not dealing with diagonals, my bad. So, um, let's go ahead and verify the uh, if, if the... Um, 
if they have the same uh, midpoint. <clears throat> so just by doing this, that's gonna help me figure out the uh, the midpoint. Um, so basically, these are the diagonal I'm looking for. So I'm going from FH. Okay, so here's FH. Okay, that creates that diagonal, right? That that whole thing. Again, if I don't, if you don't know where I'm, why I'm using FH, well, look from this point to this point, that creates a diagonal here. Okay, and I want to go ahead and figure out where that midpoint is. So to figure out the midpoint, I do M FH is equal to. Um, let's do this. I hope this helps a lot. There you go. That's negative two plus two over two, comma, four plus negative three over two. And then if I were to simplify this, well, negative two plus two is zero. Zero over two is zero. And then four plus negative three, well, that's gonna give me negative one over two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and figure out the midpoint of this diagonal, which goes from G to J. So M G to J is equal to, so here is that, and then here is this. So three plus negative three over two, comma, five plus negative four over two. So that gives me zero comma negative one half. So that means that, okay, I can see that the opposite sides are parallel, then it is a parallelogram by this definition. And if I were to check one more time to verify that the two diagonals have the same midpoint, well, that applies to theorem 6.4. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm verifying using you know two conditions here, okay? Um, <clears throat> determine whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and then justify your answer. Okay, I'm looking at this figure. I'm going to determine whether this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so first of all, it is a quadrilateral because this has one, two, three, four sides. My goal here is to figure out whether or not this is a parallelogram. I can see that um, these angles here, or not these angles, these sides here are congruent. But if I go back... It says that you have to have both pairs of opposite sides congruent. We cannot assume that this segment here and this segment here are congruent, okay? We cannot assume that. But we know for sure that theorem 6.5 says that if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both parallel and congruent then we can say that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We've already shown that these two segments are congruent, but we have to show, or can we say that these two segments here are parallel? Um, and we definitely could, but first of all, let me go ahead and write this. We know that segment FG, we know that segment FG is congruent to segment JH, okay? That's because of the given. Um, so, I want to go ahead and emphasize this part here. We have two lines. We have these two lines here, right? And this is cut by a transversal. Note that these angles here are on the same side and they are supplementary, right? So what can I say? We can say that these are since we have these lines cut by a transversal and these angles here are supplementary, we have same side interior angles, okay? So we are actually applying the same side interior angles converse, which states that if the, um, suppose that you have two lines cut by a transversal and the angles on that same side or supplementary, then we can say that these two things are parallel. So FG, segment FG, is parallel to 
to segment JH by the same side interior angles converse okay so look we have segment FG we have segment FG congruent to JH and we have shown that FG is parallel to JH by the same side interior angles converse so using theorem 6.5 using theorem 6.5 we can say that yes it's a parallelogram you can say that that is a parallelogram okay all right b um b we can see that this is a quadrilateral is it a parallelogram well i know that these angles here are congruent and then the sides here are congruent but i cannot assume that these angles over here are congruent and these sides over here are congruent i cannot i cannot assume that i'm going based on what is given so it's not a parallelogram unless those opposite sides are congruent in the opposite angles are congruent as well okay i cannot assume that this is a parallelogram not enough information to deal with all right c look at this i can see that this is a quadrilateral uh this side here and this side are congruent and then this side here and this side are congruent so based on theorem 6.2 which states that if both pairs of opposite sides of quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that's indeed congruent. Okay? So it is a parallelogram. Um, example 5. Find each x and y value that would make the quadrilateral a parallelogram. Um, so I know that these angles are in the interior. And since... This is a quadrilateral. quadrilateral. We got to figure out, you know, what x and y values would make this a parallelogram. Well, we're going to be using those, you know, theorems that we know. Opposite angles are congruent. So you can see how I'm marking those right now. One tick mark here, one tick mark there, two tick marks here, two tick marks there. Um, 56 equals 7x, so x is equal to 8. And then 5y minus 26, which is equal to 4y plus 4. So y is equal to 30, okay? And then over here, and basically I was using, um, basically I was using theorem 6.3. And then over here, I'm going to be using theorem 6.2 because all these sides are, or all these expressions here are part of the sides. So... Opposite sides are congruent. 4y minus 9 equals 2y plus 5. So y is equal to 7. And 3x plus 4 is equal to 5x minus 2. So x is equal to 3. 